Imagine a yacht so big it has its own yacht. Now imagine that yacht costs more than half a billion dollars. Sounds crazy, right? Well, buckle up, because we're about to show you 10 yachts that make that look like chump change. From helipads to submarines, movie theaters to missile defense systems, these floating palaces have it all. Lady Beatrice, you thought your inflatable pool float was fancy. Wait till you see what billionaires are cruising around in. We're kicking off our list with number 10. And let me tell you, even the cheapest yacht here is gonna make your jaw drop. Ever heard of the Barclay Brothers? These guys aren't just rich, they're swimming in cash. Frederick Barclay and his late brother David built an empire worth a whopping seven billion pounds. We're talking newspapers, delivery companies, you name it. But today we're not here to talk about their business ventures. We're here to check out Frederick's floating palace. Meet Lady Beatrice, a yacht that's so classy it might as well wear a top hat and monocle. This beauty was built back in 1993, but don't let her age fool you. She's aged like fine wine, and she's still turning heads wherever she goes. Now you might be thinking, how big can this yacht really be? Well, let me put it this way. If you laid Lady Beatrice on her side, she'd be taller than a 20-story building. Yeah, she's 60 meters long. That's not just a boat. That's a floating skyscraper. But size isn't everything, right? Wrong. Lady Beatrice isn't just long, she's fast too. This girl can zip through the water at 18 knots. That's like, well, it's pretty darn fast for a yacht, trust me. And get this, Lady Beatrice isn't some lonely vessel floating around with just Sir Frederick on board. Nope, this yacht's got room for a whole party. We're talking eight guest cabins. That's enough space to invite all your friends and their friends too. Heck, you could probably fit half your neighborhood on there. Now you might be wondering, what's so special about this yacht? Why is it on the list? Well, let me tell you, Lady Beatrice is a classic beauty. She's like the Audrey Hepburn of yachts. While some billionaires go for the flashy, in-your-face kind of luxury, Sir Frederick kept it classy. Lady Beatrice was designed by some big names in the yacht world. We're talking De Vucht naval architects for the outside and Bannenberg designs for the inside. These guys don't mess around when it comes to making boats look good. And here's a little fun fact for you. Lady Beatrice isn't just some random name. Sir Frederick named this beauty after his mum, Beatrice Cecilia Taylor. Steel magnates floating paradise. Lakshmi Mittal, this guy's not just rich, he's swimming in steel, literally. He's the big boss of ArcelorMittal, the world's largest steel-making company. And when you're the king of steel, you don't settle for any old boat. No, sir, you get yourself a floating paradise. Meet Amevi, Mittal's personal slice of ocean heaven. This bad boy was built by Ocean Co., a shipyard in the Netherlands that doesn't mess around when it comes to luxury. And get this, it cost a whopping $125 million to build. That's like buying a small island, but instead, Mittal decided to make his island float. Now, you might be thinking, what's so special about this yacht? Well, let me tell you. Amevi's got more tricks up its sleeve than a magician at a kid's birthday party. First off, it's got an on-deck jacuzzi. Yeah, you heard that right. Imagine chilling in a bubbling hot tub while cruising through the Mediterranean. Talk about living the dream. But wait, there's more. Amevi's also got a helipad, because when you're a billionaire, sometimes you just can't be bothered with boats to get to your boat. Why not just drop in from the sky, right? And if that's not enough to make your jaw drop, how about a swimming pool? Yep, a pool on a boat. It's like Inception, but with water. You're swimming in water while floating on water. Mind blown. Now, let's talk size. Amevi is 80 meters long. That's longer than a football field. And it's not just long, it's tall too. This beauty's got six decks. That's right, six whole floors of pure luxury. But what good is all that space if you can't share it, right? Well, Mittal's got that covered too. Amevi can sleep up to 16 guests in eight cabins. That's enough room for Mittal, his family, and probably half his company's board of directors. And here's the kicker. This thing can move. We're talking a top speed of 18.5 knots. Now I know what you're thinking, is that fast? Well, for a yacht this size, that's like a cheetah on water. So, why did Mittal go all out on this floating palace? Well, when you're worth 18 billion dollars, you gotta park that money somewhere. Seven Seas. Talking about a boat so fancy, it could be the set of a blockbuster movie. And that's no accident, because this yacht belongs to none other than Steven Spielberg. 
Yeah, that's Steven Spielberg, the guy who brought us Jaws, E.T., Jurassic Park, and Schindler's List. When you've directed some of the biggest movies of all time, you don't settle for any old boat. You get yourself a floating movie set, meet Seven Seas, Spielberg's personal ocean playground. This thing is so big it makes the mechanical shark from Jaws look like a goldfish. We're talking 282 feet long. That's like parking three blue whales end to end and still having room for a dinghy, but size isn't everything, right? Wrong! Seven Seas isn't just big, it's packed with more features than a special edition DVD. First up, there's an infinity pool. Now I know what you're thinking. An infinity pool on a boat? Isn't that just the ocean? But trust me, this thing is something else. It's like swimming on the edge of the world, with views that'll make your Instagram followers weep with jealousy. And get this. Seven Seas has its own movie theater. Because when you're Steven Spielberg, you don't watch movies on a regular TV like us peasants. No, you need a full-blown cinema experience, even when you're in the middle of the ocean. Can you imagine watching Jaws while actually floating on the water? Talk about immersive, but wait, there's more. This floating palace also has a gym, because even billionaire directors need to stay in shape. And a helipad because sometimes you just can't be bothered with boats to get to your boat. It's like Inception, but with yachts. Now you might be wondering, how many people can fit on this thing? Well, Seven Seas can sleep up to 14 guests. That's enough room for Spielberg, his family, and probably half the cast of his next movie. And to make sure everyone's taken care of, there's a crew of 23. That's right, there are more crew members than guests. It's like having your own floating five-star hotel, but here's the real kicker. The design of Seven Seas is like something straight out of a Spielberg movie. The exterior and interior were crafted by Nuvolari and Leonard. Designers so fancy they probably wear tuxedos to bed. They've created a yacht that's sleek, stylish, and packed with more high-tech gadgets than an alien spaceship. Dilbar. You thought Spielberg's yacht was big? Wait till you see what's coming up next. We're talking about a boat so massive, it makes the Titanic look like a bathtub toy. And the guy who owns it, he's not just rich, he's got more money than some small countries. Meet Alisher Usmanov, a Russian billionaire who's got his fingers in more pies than a baker on steroids. This guy's not just loaded, he's got businesses in everything from mining to tech. We're talking big stakes in companies like Metalo Invest and Mail.ru, but we're not here to talk about his business card collection. We're here to see his floating palace. Say hello to Dilbar, a yacht so big it probably has its own zip code. This thing is 360 feet long. That's like parking a football field in the ocean and still having room for end zones. But it's not just long, it's tall too. We're talking about a boat with more floors than some apartment buildings. Now you might be thinking, sure it's big, but what's inside? Well let me tell you, this thing's got more luxury packed into it than a golden toilet factory. First off, there's a swimming pool, but this ain't no kiddie pool. This bad boy is one of the biggest ever put on a yacht. It's so big, you could probably host the Olympics in it. But wait, there's more. Dilbar's got not one, but two helipads. Because why land one helicopter when you can land two? It's like Usmanov saying, yeah, I'm so rich I need a backup landing pad for my backup helicopter. And get this, Dilbar can fit 20 guests in its fancy rooms. That's like having a floating hotel, but way more exclusive. And to make sure everyone's living their best life, there's a crew of 48. That's right, there are more than twice as many staff as there are guests. It's like having your own personal army of butlers, chefs, and probably someone whose only job is to polish the doorknobs. Now you might be wondering, how much does all this floating luxury cost? Well, hold on to your wallets, because Dilbar set Usmanov back a cool $256 million. That's more money than most of us will see in 10 lifetimes. But here's the thing, for Usmanov, this isn't just a boat, it's a statement. It's like he's saying, look at me, I'm so rich I can afford to put a small city on the water. This yacht is all about showing off his taste for the finer things in life. It's not just big, it's fancy. We're talking top of the line everything, from the furniture to the gadgets. So there you have it, Dilbar, the floating titan that makes other yachts look like rubber duckies. Ocean victory. Hold on to your life jackets, cause we're about to dive into a yacht that's not just big, it's like a whole underwater world. We're talking about a boat so fancy, it makes other yachts look like they're from the Stone Age. 
Meet Viktor Rashnikov, a Russian billionaire who's got more steel than Superman. This guy's the big boss of Magnitogorsk Iron and Steelworks, one of Russia's biggest steel producers. But we're not here to talk about his metal empire, we're here to check out his floating palace. Say hello to Ocean Victory, a yacht that's so high-tech, it probably has its own AI. This beast was built by Fincantieri, an Italian company that knows a thing or two about making boats. And when I say boats, I mean floating cities. Ocean Victory is 140 meters long. That's like putting three blue whales end to end and still having room for a dolphin or two. But it's not just big, it's smart too. This yacht's got more gadgets than a spy movie. But here's the real kicker. Ocean Victory has an underwater observation room. Yeah, you heard that right. While other billionaires are sunbathing on deck, Rashnikov can chill out and watch fish swim by. It's like having your own private aquarium, but way cooler. And get this, Ocean Victory's got not one, not two, but six swimming pools. Six! It's like Rashnikov couldn't decide which pool he liked best, so he just said, hey, put them all in. And when you're worth $300 million, why not? But wait, there's more. This floating paradise can fit 26 guests. That's enough room for Rashnikov, his family, and probably half his company's board of directors. And to make sure everyone's living their best life, there's a crew of 50. That's almost two staff members for every guest. Now, you might be thinking, sure, it's big and fancy, but what makes it special? Well, let me tell you, Ocean Victory isn't just a pretty face. This yacht is pushing the boundaries of what's possible on water. Radiant. You thought Ocean Victory was a floating fortress? Well, buckle up, because we're about to show you a yacht that takes defense to a whole new level. We're talking about a boat so secure, it makes Fort Knox look like a cardboard box. Meet Abdullah al Futaim, a guy who's got more businesses than you've got socks. This dude's not just rich, he's got an empire that covers everything from cars to shopping malls. But we're not here to talk about his business card collection. We're here to check out his floating battleship. Say hello to Radiant, a yacht that's basically a James Bond villain's dream come true. This bad boy cost a cool $320 million. That's right, for the price of this boat, you could buy a small country or maybe a couple of private islands. But here's where things get really crazy. Radiant isn't just fancy, it's armed to the teeth. This yacht's got more weapons than a video game boss. We're talking sonic guns that can burst your eardrums. No, really. If anyone tries to mess with Alfu Time, they're in for a world of hurt. And if that's not enough to scare off the bad guys, Radiant's also packing water cannons. But these aren't your kid's super soakers. These things can sink boats from 100 yards away. It's like having a fire hose on steroids. Now you might be thinking, what's Al Futaim so scared of? Well, turns out this yacht's got a pretty wild history. It wasn't always his. Radiant was originally built for Boris Berezovsky, a Russian oligarch who clearly watched too many spy movies. But the craziest part, Radiant's got its own getaway car, a boat. There's a speedboat built right into this thing, designed for quick escapes. It's like Al Futaim saying, yeah, I've got a boat inside my boat, what of it? But don't think Radiant is all guns and no fun. This floating fortress is also a luxury paradise. We're talking jacuzzis, a gym, and enough space to fit 20 of your closest friends. Plus, there's a beach club, because why go to the beach when you can bring the beach to you? And get this, Radiant's got not one, but multiple helipads. Because when you're this rich, sometimes you need options for where to park your chopper. Dubai. In your mind, a yacht with sonic weapons was impressive, right? Wait till you see what's coming up next. We're talking about a boat so fancy, it makes Buckingham Palace look like a garden shed. And the guy who owns it? He's not just rich, he's royalty. Meet Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. This guy's not just some random rich dude, he's the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and the ruler of Dubai. Yeah, that Dubai, the city that's basically a playground for billionaires. And when you're the ruler of a place like that, you don't settle for any old boat. Say hello to Dubai, a yacht so luxurious it's basically a floating city. This bad boy is 162 meters long, that's longer than one and a half football fields. And it's not just long, it's tall too. We're talking seven whole decks, that's right, seven. It's like a skyscraper decided to take a swim. Now you might be thinking, sure, it's big, but what's inside? Well, let me tell you, this thing's got more luxury packed into it than all of Las Vegas. First off, there's a mosaic swimming pool, not just any pool, a mosaic pool. It's like swimming in a giant piece of art, but wait, 
there's more. Dubai's got a circular staircase that's so fancy, it'll make your legs tired just looking at it. And get this, there's a squash room, because when you're cruising the ocean, sometimes you just gotta hit a little rubber ball against a wall, right? And if that's not enough to make your jaw drop, how about a helipad? Yeah, this yacht's got one of those too, because when you're Sheikh Mohammed, sometimes you need to make a grand entrance, or a quick getaway. Who knows, but here's the real kicker. Dubai's got its own submarine. No, really. It's like Sheikh Mohammed watched too many James Bond movies and thought, you know what, I need one of those. Now, you might be wondering how many people can fit on this floating palace. Well, Dubai can accommodate up to 115 guests and crew. That's not a yacht, that's a small town. But here's the thing, Dubai isn't just a boat, it's a statement. It's like Sheikh Mohammed saying, look at me, I'm so rich I can put a whole city on water. This yacht is all about showing off Dubai's reputation for luxury and grandeur. It's not just big, it's over the top fancy. Topaz, meet Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan. This guy's not just rich, he's royalty. He's the deputy prime minister of the UAE and part of Abu Dhabi's ruling family. When you've got that kind of power, you don't just buy a yacht, you buy a floating city. Say hello to Topaz, a yacht so big it probably has has its own zip code. This thing is 147 meters long. That's like parking a skyscraper in the ocean, and it didn't come cheap. Topaz cost a cool $527 million. That's more money than most of us will see in a hundred lifetimes. Now you might be thinking, sure, it's big and expensive, but what's inside? Well, let me tell you, this thing's got more entertainment options than a Vegas casino. First off, there's a fully equipped movie theater. No, really. While other billionaires are watching movies on their iPads, Mansour's got his own private cinema in the middle of the ocean. But wait, there's more. Topaz has got a jacuzzi, because sometimes you need to relax after a hard day of, well, being a billionaire. And if you're feeling a bit restless, there's a state-of-the-art fitness center, because even when you're cruising the high seas, you gotta keep that beach body, right? And get this, Topaz has its own helicopter landing pad, because when you're this rich, sometimes you need to make a grand entrance or a quick getaway, who knows? But Topaz isn't just about showing off. This yacht is like a floating billboard for Abu Dhabi. It's Mansour's way of saying, hey world, check us out. It's all about showcasing Abu Dhabi's rising prominence on the global stage. Think about it, Abu Dhabi's not just some random place in the desert anymore. It's becoming a hub of luxury and innovation. And what better way to show that off than with a yacht that's basically a floating five-star resort? Topaz isn't just a boat. It's a statement. It's like Mansour saying, Look at us. We're so rich and modern. We can put a whole city on water. Azam, stay tuned because we're about to show you a yacht that makes Topaz look like a rubber ducky in a bathtub. We're talking about a boat so fast and fancy it's basically a rocket ship on water. Meet Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayan. This guy's not just rich, he's the president of the United Arab Emirates. When you're running a whole country, you need a ride that's as impressive as your title. And boy, did Sheikh Khalifa deliver. Say hello to Azam, a yacht so big and fast it's breaking records left and right. This thing is 590 feet long, that's longer than some cruise ships. It's like Sheikh Khalifa looked at other billionaires' yachts and said, Nah, not big enough. But here's the crazy part, Azam isn't just big, it's fast. This beast can hit speeds of 30 knots. For a yacht this size, that's like watching a skyscraper do a sprint. It's the fastest yacht of its size in the world. No, really. Now you might be thinking, sure, it's big and fast, but what's inside? Well, let me tell you, this thing's got more luxury packed into it than all of Las Vegas. We're talking up to 50 private suites. That's not a yacht, that's a floating hotel. And get this, Azam's got a submarine. Yeah, you heard that right. A submarine with a missile defense system. It's like Sheikh Khalifa watched too many spy movies and thought, you know what? I need one of those. But Azam isn't just about showing off. This yacht is like a floating billboard for the UAE. It's Sheikh Khalifa's way of saying, hey world, check us out. It's all about showcasing the UAE's rising prominence on the global stage. Think about it. The UAE's not just some random place in the desert anymore. It's becoming a hub of luxury and innovation. And what better way to show that off than with a yacht that's basically a floating city. Azam took four years to build. That's right, while other billionaires were waiting for their yachts, Sheikh Khalifa was waiting for his floating country. And it didn't come cheap. This bad boy cost a cool $600 million. 
that's more money than most of us will see in a thousand lifetimes. But here's the thing, Azam isn't just a boat, it's a masterpiece of engineering. The folks at Lursen Yachts, the German shipbuilders who made this beast, probably had to invent new ways to build boats just to make Azam happen. And the inside? It's like a fancy French hotel decided to go for a swim. The interior was designed by Christophe Leone, a guy who probably uses gold leaf instead of ketchup on his fries. We're talking sophistication with a capital S eclipse. You thought Azam was the biggest, baddest yacht on the seas? Well, hold on to your life jackets, because we're about to show you a boat so huge it makes aircraft carriers jealous. We're talking about a yacht so fancy, it's basically a floating country. Meet Roman Abramovich, a guy who's got more money than some small nations. This dude's not just rich, he's got his fingers in more pies than a baker on steroids. We're talking oil, steel, you name it. But we're not here to talk about his business card collection. We're here to check out his floating palace. Say hello to Eclipse, a yacht so massive it probably has its own weather system. This thing is 162.5 meters long. That's like parking a skyscraper in the ocean and still having room for a few houses. And it didn't come cheap. Eclipse cost a cool $500 million. That's more money than most of us will see in a thousand lifetimes. Now, you might be thinking, sure, it's big and expensive. But what's inside? Well, let me tell you, this thing's got more features than a Swiss army knife. First off, there's a missile defense system. No, really. While other billionaires are worried about paparazzi, Abramovich is ready for World War III. But wait, there's more. Eclipse has got its own mini submarine, because sometimes you just need to escape underwater. It's like Abramovich watched too many spy movies and thought, you know what, I need one of those. And get this. Eclipse has got armor plating and bulletproof windows. It's not just a yacht, it's a floating fortress. Abramovich isn't taking any chances with his ocean getaway, but don't think Eclipse is all defense and no fun. This floating city's got more luxury packed into it than all of Monaco. We're talking two swimming pools, because one is just not enough when you're this rich. There's a disco hall for when Abramovich feels like busting a move in the middle of the ocean. And if that's not enough, there are 24 guest cabins. That's not a yacht, that's a floating hotel. Eclipse isn't just redefining luxury, it's creating a whole new category. Business Insider said, Eclipse redefines the concept of luxury at sea with its comprehensive and state-of-the-art features. And they're not kidding, this thing's got more high-tech gadgets than a Bond villain's lair. But here's the real kicker, Eclipse has got a laser defense system to stop people from taking photos. That's right, Abramovich is so private he's using freaking lasers to keep the paparazzi away. It's like he's living in the future while the rest of us are stuck in 2023. So there you have it, Eclipse, the floating city that makes other yachts look like rubber duckies. It's got more defense systems than some countries, more luxury than a five-star resort, and enough space to fit a small army. The price of luxury. You thought those yachts were expensive? Wait till you see how much they actually cost. We're talking numbers so big they'll make your head spin. Let's break it down, starting from the cheapest to the most expensive. Lady Beatrice, owned by Frederick Barclay, comes in at a cool $30 million. That's like buying a mansion and then buying another mansion just to store your first mansion. Next up, we've got Amivi, Lakshmi Mittal's floating paradise, at $125 million. For that price, you could buy a small island, but Mittal decided to make his island float. Steven Spielberg's Seven Seas cost $200 million. That's more than the budget of some of his blockbuster movies. Dilbar, owned by Alisha Usmanov, set him back $256 million. That's like buying a small country, but instead, he chose to put it on water. Ocean Victory, Viktor Rashnikov's underwater world, cost $300 million. That's enough money to buy a few hundred super fancy cars, but he went for one super fancy boat instead. Radiant, Abdullah al Futaim's floating fortress, comes in at $320 million. For that price, you could probably build an actual fortress, but where's the fun in that? Sheikh Mohammed's Dubai cost $400 million. That's like saying, I'll take the entire skyline of a small city, but make it float. Topaz, owned by Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, cost a whopping $527 million. You could buy a few private islands for that price, but Mansour decided to combine them all into one super yacht. 
Sheikh Khalifa's Azam, the speed demon of the seas, cost $600 million. That's enough money to fund a small space program, but he chose to explore the oceans instead. And finally, we've got Roman Abramovich's Eclipse, the floating city of wonders, coming in at a mind-blowing $500 million. That's half a billion dollars floating on water. Now you might be wondering how much is that altogether? Well, if you add up the cost of all these yachts, you get, drum roll please, over $3.3 billion. That's more money than the entire economy of some small countries. But let's put this into perspective. The average home price in the United States is about $375,000. So for the price of Eclipse alone, you could buy over 1,300 average American homes. You could literally house a small town for the price of one yacht. And it's not just about the initial cost. These floating palaces need a lot of upkeep. We're talking millions of dollars every year just to keep them running. It's like buying a super expensive car, but then having to rebuild the engine every time you drive it. But here's the thing, these yachts aren't just toys for the ultra-rich. They actually have a big impact on the economy. Building and maintaining these mega yachts creates jobs in shipbuilding, maintenance and hospitality sectors. It's like a whole industry built around keeping billionaires happy on the high seas. And it's not just about the boats themselves. When these floating palaces dock in ports and marinas, they bring a lot of money with them. The crew needs supplies, the guests want to go shopping, and suddenly the local economy gets a big Big boost. It's like a cruise ship, but way fancier and with a lot more zeros on the price tag. The future of billionaire yachts. Here we're talking a yacht so fancy, they'll make today's floating palaces look like rubber duckies. So what's next for these mega-rich seafarers? Well, it's not just about size anymore. These days, it's all about standing out. Billionaires want yachts that are one of a kind, like floating fingerprints. We're talking boats with crazy designs that'll make you do a double take. Imagine a yacht shaped like a giant swan, or maybe a floating island with its own beach. No, really. These aren't just dreams. They're actual concepts being tossed around by yacht designers. It's like these guys are living in 3023, while we're stuck in 2023. But it's not just about looks. The future of billionaire yachts is all about high-tech gadgets that'll make James Bond jealous. We're talking AI systems that can drive the boat for you. Imagine kicking back with a martini while your yacht navigates itself through stormy seas. Now that's living the good life. And get this, some designers are even talking about putting rotating beds on these yachts. Yeah, you heard that right. Beds that rotate, so you can always have the perfect view. It's like these billionaires are saying, hey, why should I move to see the sunset when I can make the whole room move instead? But here's the real kicker. The future of billionaire yachts is going green. No, they're not painting them green. Although who knows, maybe that'll be the next trend. We're talking eco-friendly designs that'll make Mother Nature give these billionaires a big thumbs up. Some yacht builders are looking into using solar power and wind energy to run these floating palaces. Others are exploring hybrid engines that'll cut down on pollution. It's like these billionaires suddenly remembered they need a planet to park their yachts on. And it's not just about the engines. We're talking sustainable materials for the interiors too. Imagine lounging on a couch made from recycled ocean plastic while sipping champagne from a glass made from sand collected from the beach you just passed. It's luxury with a conscience baby. But don't think these eco-friendly yachts will be any less luxurious. The impact of mega. You thought these mega yachts were just floating playgrounds for the ultra-rich? Think again. These billion-dollar boats are actually floating economies, creating jobs and boosting local businesses wherever they go. But here's the thing, not everyone's happy about it. Let's start with the good stuff. These yachts ain't just built overnight. They need armies of workers to put them together. We're talking engineers, designers, welders, you name it. It's like a whole town working just to make one boat. And it doesn't stop there. Once these floating palaces are on the water, they need crews to keep them running. Captains, chefs, cleaners. It's like a floating hotel with more staff than guests. But here's where it gets really interesting. When these mega yachts roll into town, they bring a whole lot of money with them. The crew needs supplies, the guests want to go shopping, and suddenly, the local shops are making bank. It's like Black Friday, but instead of crowds of bargain hunters, you've got a bunch of billionaires ready to spend big. Take places like Monaco or the French Riviera. These spots are like magnets for mega yachts, and when the yachts come, so do the tourists. Everyone wants to see these floating mansions up close. It's like a free aquarium. 
but instead of fish, you're watching rich people. But hold up, because not everyone's popping champagne over these mega yachts. Some folks are looking at these floating palaces and thinking, hey, is this fair? You've got boats worth hundreds of millions, while some people can't even afford a rubber dinghy. It's like having a gold-plated Ferrari parked next to a bike with a flat tire. Business Insider said it best. Some of the world's wealthiest individuals own the most outlandish yachts. No kidding. It's like these billionaires are in a competition to see who can build the biggest, fanciest boat. And while they're playing their game of nautical one-upmanship, regular folks are watching from the shore, wondering if they'll ever even set foot on a yacht. And it's not just about the money. These mega-yachts are like floating cities, and cities make trash. 